First I bled the brakes down below with the calipers. That's something I forgot to record for you. Then started undoing the screws on the master cylinder. Then I covered the motorcycle to protect the paint from any brake fluid that might remain. I might have gotten a little carried away here. Sometimes it's a little sticky, so you have to pry it up. And you remove the brake lever. Don't forget there's a return spring in there, you don't want to lose that. Pull the boot off the banjo bolt. Pay attention to what angle that bolt is. And hopefully you're replacing the original brake lines there with steel braided ones. You'll want to remember what angle those attachments go back on. Struggled with this one till I looked online and found out there's a hole under here to push up on somehow, and that is supposed to make it possible. Oh, there it is. All right, that's what you're pressing up on. and start taking off the rest of the master cylinder. I'm going to pause the video here for a moment just to point out this is a good time to probably disconnect the master cylinder, that wire, from the uh, headlight assembly. That way you can take it inside, work on it, and not risk dropping things because it's awkward and attached to the bike still. Not something that dawned on me until after. C-clamp comes out. Set it aside. Now you can pull the float. Next you unscrew the bolt holding down the sensor push it up to move it out. It can be stuck because of an o-ring in there that's seized up. Removing this switch turned out to be one of the biggest annoyances. Let it soak for a little while, some liquid wrench, and then tried pushing it out with my fingers. Tweezers, tried pushing it out with a screwdriver maybe a crowbar, a winch, tried pushing it out with pliers, tire iron, squirted some more, more pliers, hammer, I, if I recall, a wrench, maybe ratchets, my teeth, teeth, don't even know what I used there, I considered a torch, and more, and finally, this seemed to work. <sighs> Two hours later it's out this is what I should have done before taking parts out of the master cylinder disconnect the wire I went ahead and got some tape um, at a point you didn't see on camera and marked a few of these so I knew what they were pulled the plug. Be really gentle. These are 30-year-old plastic plugs. It's not fun to break one of those and have to replace it. And there you go. See? I could have done all that other stuff inside. Start pulling it all apart. Ew. Well, that's what's left of that. Holy cow. Right side mirror is reverse threaded, safety feature for an accident. I laid down some paper just so I could see the parts, they're small, and when you're undoing everything out of the master cylinder, put them down in order so you can see what order they go back in. Alright, that way. 
Be careful with the spring. You don't want it to fly across the room. Okay, don't do it that way. <laughs> At least put your finger on the end of it so you don't look like a fool like I just did. Alright, there it goes there. I don't have anything good. Oh, nice. So that wasn't going to last much longer. After a little bit of effort, you can see, I finally got it out very carefully. Used a few tools to scrape and a few tools to pop so I wasn't scraping along the edge. And the little metal piece popped out. Again, these come in handy. There you go. I'll clean that up and on to the next thing. Since I didn't video it, I want to take a moment to remind you when cleaning the master cylinder to make sure you get the small holes in the bottom or you'll have issues. This is not the same master cylinder. This is often, I think, an 85 junkyard Virago. You can see it doesn't have the low fluid sensor hole. But just to give you the idea, the holes in the bottom need to be cleaned out. So when I took this apart, I found that there was a little bit of pitting in there and you probably can't see it, not enough light, but it's far enough back that it probably won't be in the sweep of the piston, but just in case I went ahead and honed it slightly to clean it up, um, made my own. Two attempts, I tried this way first, that's a smaller than 5 eighths, that's the bore. Um, dowel that I put a little bit of two-sided mounting tape on and some 1500 grit sandpaper. Um, that almost worked but it seemed a little bit small so I went ahead and used a 5 8 size since it's the same size, sanded it down, smoothed it out, and cut a groove in it. Um, and with that groove I can slot in some sandpaper. Add WD-40. And um, sand it around. I went clockwise. I don't know if that matters, but that's what I did. And cleaned it up. We we'll hope that'll work. Otherwise, I'm blowing 500 bucks or so on a whole new master cylinder. Here I'm putting in the new sight glass. First you put a little bit of the black adhesive. Of course before all of this you hopefully have cleaned everything out. No grease, no brake fluid, no anything. And it's clean and smooth down to the metal. No old glue in there or anything. And um, be careful when you sand it down. You want to use really fine sandpaper. 20 seconds or so. Next, I took some of the gasket sealer and dabbed it around carefully. Pressed it in, no gaps. Probably safer with a toothpick just in case, but I did fine with this. And you go around the outside, clean it up as best you can as you go along. And then you'll also want to do the inside, if you can get to it. And once you've pressed all of that in there to cover up any possible leaks, you can use something to clean off the sight glass, turpentine, whatever. I'm an artist, so I happen to have linseed oil nearby, and that's what I use to clean it up with a Q-tip. Maybe check the inside as well. And there you have it. Let that set for a while before moving on.
What I'm working with here is a master rebuild kit from xjforever.com and it's probably the best place to get any of these replacement parts for old XJs. There's other sites out there you can get it, but odds are you'll get the wrong parts or they won't fit right. Len at XJ Forever has put the effort in to make sure that you're getting the correct things. Drop him a line via email and he'll set you up, give you a quote, and you just pay through PayPal. Simple as that. In fact, just to help, I'll leave a link for his site down below. And here I've been putting in new o-rings for that sensor that comes in the full rebuild kit. There's a new screw to put it on and of course washer, lock washer. In goes the float. And new E clip. Man, them pliers have been really handy. Skip on getting a gasket for the lid cover. And probably a good idea to get some new screws too. Time to put it back on the bike. Reconnect. I won't go into it in this video, but hopefully you're not using the original brake lines. You can see the date they were put on right on the rubber hose. I, uh, my, this bike was 1982 original brake lines. These are some nice steel ones. Make sure you get new crush washers. And, as I said earlier, make sure that when you put them back on that the angle of that banjo bolt there is at the same angle. Also, make sure that the holes in the union bolt line up so fluid can flow. Use new crush washers. They're a soft metal and really one-time use. Tighten everything down per the manual, fill it with fluid, check for leaks, bleed the brakes, take it for a cautious test drive. And there you have it.